Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing today? We're going to talk about all of these EcoBoost Mustangs blowing up. So first things first, let's talk about all the shit, all you motherfuckers, or all you people, or all you lovely subscribers, depending on who you are. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, you're just a person, hit the subscribe button and rip Tampa Stock and Southern Racing. Otherwise, you know, you're just, you're just a viewer, but I'm still happy that you're here. So, apparently, there's this epidemic of EcoBoost engines blowing up left and right. Now, when I say left and right, that means there have been uh, 10, let's call it 10 confirmed cases of the EcoBoost just going kaboom. A lot of people say, oh, the engine's garbage. La, 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 la. Shut up. Shut up. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Quiet. Here's the thing. Just like with the MT-82, when the new 5.0 came out, the, the Coyote, everyone was like, oh, the MT-82 is garbage. Blah, blah, blah. My dende small. It wasn't the transmission. Granted, the transmission was not the greatest, but the biggest problem behind it was user error. Just like with this MT-82, people are like, oh, you know, <clears throat> damn, sorry, pardon me, let's cut that out, snip. Everybody's like, oh, you know, the, the MT-82 and the, and the 15 and 16 Mustang still garbage. No, it's not. I can drive this on a daily basis. I can roll through the fucking gears. I can power shift, power shift, power shift. Yeah, I can power shift. And there's no grinding, nothing, no lockout bullshit, whatever. The problem is that if you're having problems with your MT-82, especially in the 15 and the 16, because again, like I said, the previous generation, um, compared to the previous generation, this had some improvements. But if you're still fucking up with these cars, you're either making a shit ton of power, which great for you, but if you're under 450 to the rear tire, you should not have a problem with your transmission. The problem isn't the transmission, the problem is you. Right now, my car makes 380, 390 foot-pounds of torque and right around 300 horsepower. Anthony, who has the, um, the Coyote in his 15, makes right around 400 foot-pounds of torque and 430, 450 horsepower, depending on if he's on the the corn or if he's not on the corn. So keep that in mind because his transmission is buttery smooth and so is mine. So now that we have to talk about the transmission, let's get back to the engines. The reason why these fucking engines are blowing up is because of user error, and as much as I hate to say this, Ford and the tuners have a big part in this. Prime example is, let's, let's start with user error. Why on God's green earth would you be in a manual car that is turbocharged, driving 20 miles per hour, getting to an on-ramp and think, oh, it's a good idea, a good, a good idea, to be in sixth gear and put my foot down. Now, to me, that doesn't make sense. To Anthony, that doesn't make sense. And I don't think to any car owner that doesn't make sense. First off, you know, there's there's that exhilarating rush when you downshift into fifth, then you go into fourth, maybe into third. And then you put your foot down to get up to highway speeds. Yeah, that's the good stuff. If you care about fuel economy, you shouldn't even have bought an EcoBoost Mustang. I don't care what Ford says, this car is not meant to get 35, 36, 37 miles per gallon. Has it happened? Yes. Can you make it happen? Of course. Is it going to happen on a daily basis? No. 
It's not. It's a fucking turbocharged car. What did you expect? This isn't a three-cylinder, 1.2-liter... So, that's the first thing. That that Super Knock LS whatever bullshit that people are talking about. That's because the when you're in six gear at um, a low RPM, like I don't know, like 20 miles an hour, which you're at like what, like like 1500 RPM, and you put your foot down, the what is it? There's like a they call it Super Knock because there's so much air being forced into the goddamn engine. And the fuel supply just isn't there because you're running at such low revs and the injectors don't know what the fuck's going on. And again, I don't understand why you would do that, even as a, <coughs> excuse me, even as a person that came from naturally aspirated cars, like um, Anthony's car, Dove Anthony's car, for example, there still isn't something like, when I was in his car, there wasn't anything in my head that said, oh, you know, it's all good, I can just stay in sixth gear and accelerate from 20. No, it was a natural um, decision in my brain, an instinct for me to downshift. Now, like I said before, it all comes down to it being user error and such, so... So that's a whole nother thing. That if you're an inexperienced person, then maybe the EcoBoost or any turbocharged vehicle really isn't for you. Granted, somewhere along the line, we all have to, you know, step into the turbo territory. But again, in in my mind, even like I said, be it a a, a Corvette or a Camaro, you know, anything with a big V8 or you know a V6 Mustang, even nothing in my head and just speaks and say, hey. I can get on this on-ramp doing 20 or 25 and put my foot down on six gear and expect to go somewhere. Um, no. Next thing is oral starvation. I know it sounds stupid, especially because like oral starvation, so you mean the oil supply is shit? No, it's not. It's good. The problem is again, user error. Why would you take your car and do 10, 15 donuts in it. As many of you know, in drifting, there's high-speed cornering, which for drifting, you have these um, special oil pans there. I think they're called baffled. There's little flaps in there that when you corner to one side, they keep oil from sloshing over to one side only. Now, granted, when you're doing a donut, it's it may not be as extreme, but you're still having the same effect. So if you're sitting there going in circles, you know, by the time you get to your 10, 15 circle, you know, there may not be that much of an oil supply. Even, I don't even know if the fucking oil pump can handle that. And depending on, let's say you're low on oil, that's a whole nother thing because oil's being brought over to one side. If the pickup's over here and the oil's over here, it's not gonna fucking get it. So that's another thing. There was a individual on the forum or was it the Facebook group? It was one or the other. It was like, oh yeah, I just popped my motor, you know, piece of shit forward. And what was he doing? Donuts. Not just one or two. No, this motherfucker was doing like nine, 10, 11, 12, just blah, blah, blah. Besides the fact that there's no fucking air getting to the goddamn radiator to cool the fucking car down, it's just, it just it's fucking stupid. You don't have a race car. It's It's not, built for that. So again, user error. Third, that's something that's a little controversial. We all know that um, the EcoBoost Mustang is a direct injected engine and that once you have the direct injected car, um, a lot of people, including myself, recommend changing the plugs and potentially going on a pro tune as soon as possible and installing a catch can. The reason why I'm saying this is, again, like I said in another video, the stock gap from Ford, which, shame on you Ford for even letting this go past your quality control, I suppose. These plugs are so far out of fucking range, it's ridiculous. Let's say, for example, the gap's supposed to be set at point oh two nine. When I changed my plugs, my cylinder one plug and my cylinder four plug were Point, what was it? Point oh one to point oh oh eight 
apart as far as the gap is concerned. So I had one at like 0.021, then I had one at 0.031. Now granted that that's a little extreme, but they were none of them were gapped the same. So to me that's an issue. Next thing would be the tune that comes from the factory. Now granted Ford is making constant revisions to their tunes, but who the fuck is texting me? Oh, it's Julia. Hi, Julia. Okay, so where was I? With the tune. Ford is making constant revisions on the tune, but it's... When you, when you have a tune for your car, it's not going to work everywhere you go. Uh, you can live in an area where the fuel's shitty. I don't care if you can pump 93. If the 93 octane is garbage, it's not going to help you any. So that's another big thing that I prefer about being pro-tuned because they can say, okay, you know, this is your fuel quality, this is what it does, this is your tune. Compared to Ford where they just say, ah, fuck it. Even to the point where they still let you run 87 octane in the car, which to me it should be a requirement to run 93. Besides that the car's going to run like shit, but you're just giving them an excuse, or your car an excuse, sorry, to, you know, break. Evo owners don't do that. STI owners don't do that. I don't know about WRX owners, but you know, they vape, so that's, you know, that could be something that they do. I love you guys. And, uh, where was I? Plugs. Change them. Next is the catch cam. Again, like I said in the last video, you don't want oil on your valves. You don't want oil in your combustion chamber. If you don't have a catch can, guess what's going to happen? That shit is going to cake up on your goddamn valves. Worst comes to worst, it actually gets into your combustion chamber and just ruins the, what is it, the, the, the air fuel ratio. Which, again, there's been cases where somebody was not running a catch can and you could see how bad the oil cake up was on the valves and you know, you could just, it told a story about oil getting to the cylinders, fucking up the ratio and just boom. So, keep that in mind, just don't do stupid shit in your goddamn car. I understand people want to make power and you know, they, they want to beat ass and beat records and shit. But if you're in a stock car, don't tell your tuner to go balls to the wall. If your tuner says the tune is safe, and you're running, I don't know, a crazy high air fuel ratio, and it's just, it's not worth it. Like, I, I, I hate to make this sound like I'm plugging for fucking Adam, but he's probably the most conservative, kick-ass tuner that you can ask for. If you want to go balls to the wall and not give a fuck about your engine, he will tune your car for that. But otherwise, you know, he will make sure you still gain power, but you're still within safe parameters. Like, like, like me, for example, I don't, you know, make a shit ton of power once we go to E30, that's a different story. And I know, I know, intercooler, it's fucking coming. But in comparison, you know, um, there's another guy, emergency response, what the fuck? Sorry. There's another guy that runs an EcoBoost Mustang, and he has blank for tuning, and yes, his car's faster, but it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't sound healthy anymore. You know, he, he has to take his tune off, take it to the dealer, because it may be doing some knockity knock 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 noises, and he's worried, and he's pissing his pants right now. So... Like I said, guys, just maintenance, fucking plugs, a reliable tuner, and just, you know, don't do stupid shit. Like, I can't say that because I do stupid shit. You know, don't hot lap your car at the track. Don't go fucking drifting in your Mustang, first of all, because you're going to hit people. And nobody likes Mustangs hitting people. Not anymore, anyway. And, you know, just, just common sense stuff, you know, change your oil, you know, do the, check your quality fuel, make sure your plugs are good, change your fucking plugs every, you know, what is it, 15 or 25,000 miles, I'm about to change mine, because I'm out there 25,000 miles, and I beat the shit 
out of Marceline, and she takes it like a champ. She gets the, she gets good oil, she gets good plugs, she gets lots of loving, she gets to, you know, breathe out at least once a day. So, you know, it's, she's returning the favor. And the thing here is that a lot of people always say, oh, you know, the couple's muscling's garbage, blah, blah, blah. I am a living and breathing example of maintenance doing what it's supposed to do. It provides longevity to the engine. I'm at almost 25,000 miles. I change my oil on a regular basis. I have a clean air filter. I changed my plugs. Just regular ass maintenance. I make sure that the tires are good, blah, blah, blah. I fucking clean the car. It returns the favor, and that's what it's supposed to do. When I turn this car on, it turns me on, and that's what it's all about. So, stop talking shit about the EcoBoost, because sooner or later, knock, knock, you're gonna get beat by one, and then you're gonna be like, fuck, I should've gotten an EcoBoost, or a Coyote, the turbos, two, or one big one, like this big. Anyway, guys, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. This is something that's been kind of bugging me because I see this shit almost every single day now, and the forums are full of it. It's just, um, it's sad and pathetic because there are thousands, if not millions, millions, maybe even millions at this point, if not hundreds of thousands of EcoBoost vehicles out there without any problems, and it's the select few that have to ruin the bunch and complain and moan. And like I said, guys, most of the time, it's their own fault for doing stupid shit or neglecting the car, so. That's my two cents. Uh, I don't care <laughs> if you like it or not, but um, that's how I feel. And that's my opinion and I'm entitled to it. Um, if anything else comes forth, some staggering new information, about this or some crazy thing happens where it turns out that some engines just were bad because of where they were built, um, I will keep an eye out for it and I will report um, as soon as something comes out. But um, otherwise, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and don't forget, it's not over until you win. I'll see you guys next time. So we just pop that off really easy. So then what we'll do is just kind of...